called the throne of grace. So we can obtain mercy and grace to help in time of need. that comes from within. The Bible says the peace that surpasses human understanding. You can't describe it, you can't explain it, but it is there. vision defects vision defects this month we're talking about anointed to see but really what are we seeing are we seeing the right things or can we even see at all so that's what the Lord wants to address here this morning and our objective is to highlight the danger of not seeing at all or not seeing properly just like a person's physical eyes can become defective a person's ability to see ahead can also become defective. It is important to understand this so we know how to accurately diagnose the state of our vision. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. This chapter of the Bible is very, very important on so many levels. But for what we're addressing here this morning, it is particularly important. It's crucial. Because Jesus was teaching us, and specifically those people that were there with him at that time, he was trying to show them what it's like to live a life of vision, among other things. And there is a key word there that highlights it, and that's the word reward. That's the word reward. You see a lot of that in this chapter. Now, before we go in depth, we have different types of vision defects. Number one is blindness. Some people cannot see at all. And then you also have short-sightedness. Some can see, but they can only see something very close so in terms of time they can only see today or tomorrow or next week so they cannot see five years from now they cannot see 2030 if you talk to them about 2030 they think you're an alien because in their mind that is so far away it's never going to come and while some people are far-sighted they can only see you know the next generation they always you hear them always talking about the next generation the next generation but they are ignoring this generation those are those people that they know how to save and starve themselves but they might not be alive to enjoy what they are saving for oh i want to buy a house i want to buy a car i want to do this so they, they starve themselves completely because their mind is just too focused on the next generation another category you also find parents sometimes especially mothers caring so much for others at their own detriment so by the time those people they are caring for have moved on now they're empty because they were just focusing only on the future and then of course you have those with blurred vision or skilled vision they can they think they can see but they cannot really see like the man whose eyes Jesus healed he says what do you see he say I see men like trees he could see but he wasn't seeing clearly and I think that is one of the most dangerous because the one that is blind knows they are blind the one that is short-sighted knows the one that is far-sighted knows but many times those with blurred vision Many times they don't know. They think they know, but they don't know. So they are running or pursuing the wrong kind of vision. 
praise God. So, now let's now backtrack and start again from the beginning. Matthew chapter 6. Very significant point in Jesus' ministry. He was on the mountain. From there, he addressed so many issues confronting people and his future in ministry. And one of the issues he addressed was the issue of reward. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 1. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Initially, the world started this, but they've roped in so many Christians as well. So they do things and they share it on Facebook. You know. um, otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do. Why do you have to record yourself blessing somebody? Why do you have to do that? Who asked you to do it? Oh, maybe it might inspire people. <laughs> but, but, but this is what the Bible said. He says, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory from men, likes and shares. That's glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. So that's their reward. And trust me, likes these days is a good reward for many people. 100,000 likes, 5,000 shares. That's a good reward. But that's not the kind of reward I want. I prefer the reward that comes from God. But when you do a charitable deed, remember we're talking about vision. Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, which means be as discreet as you can. There are times when you are unable to be discreet. There are times like that, but as much as you can, be discreet. That your charitable deeds may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. It's his job to put you on the map, not you doing it yourself. How does this tie to vision? You see, I said in this chapter, you see a lot of, you know, you see that word reward used many, 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 many times. Reward is one of the most powerful ways of motivating good behavior. Even in, in testing, in, in, you know, uh, when, when they're using animals or whatever it is, they use reward as a form of testing, as a form of motivation, as a form of training. They use rewards. So when you find a a Christian that wants to please God and sees a situation it is very tempting you know there are some things you can post online that would you know go viral but you think about the reward and you say is this the kind of reward I want so it will help you to be far sighted to be properly sighted rather so instead of being short sighted and saying okay what do I want right now the, the message or the thought of the reward would make you pause and say, no, 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 no. This is not the kind of future I want. What the future I want is God himself blessing me for what he saw me do in secret. So as a result of that, I am not going to act this way. This is the way I'm going to act. Somebody shout a loud amen. Amen. In the kingdom of God, reward thinking would help motivate our actions. That's why the Bible tells us about the crowns we're going to receive when we get to heaven. It's to let us know that what we're doing is not in vain. There is a reward for our actions. Now, one of the things that God does in the course of our walk with him is he tests our vision. And that was one of the other issues that Jesus addressed in this chapter. God said to Amos the prophet, what do you see? That was a test of vision. In Amos chapter 8, 
from verse 1 to 2. Thus the Lord God showed me, behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what do you see? That was God testing his vision. What do you see? I showed you something. I've shown you something, rather. What do you see? And he said, I see a basket of summer fruit. Sorry. Yes. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people, Israel. I will not pass by them anymore. And we already read earlier. God also said to Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? So, God tests our vision. The Bible says that he took the people around the wilderness so he could test their hearts. You have the physical eyes. You have the eyes of the heart, according to what Paul said. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Which means we cannot assume people can see because they have eyes. If therefore your eye is good, how do we know if our eyes are good? Is by examining, measuring ourselves with these defects to see, okay, do I fall in any of these categories? So I make sure that my eyes are good. So my whole body will be full of light. And then listen to this. If therefore the light in you is darkness, which means a skilled or blurred vision. How great is that darkness? I often see some Christians that believe they can be a Christian on their own, in their own homes. I don't need anybody. I don't need to be part of any church and all that. Some of them even go a step further. They say they don't want to be part of organized religion. Who is a part of organized religion? I'm not. We are the ones that use those terminologies. The Bible just calls the church the church. Of course, people make mistakes. But when you see people running with those types of ideas in a dogmatic way, you know their vision is blurred. You know, one thing I, I, I understand and I've shared with a few people, the devil has been here for a long time. It's very silly for a three-year-old child to be trying to outsmart a 60-year-old person. It's very silly. You can read all their actions like you're reading a book. They think they are being smart, but you know what they're doing. You're just sometimes playing along. That's what happens. The devil knows. Many people have tried it. It did not work. Don't waste your time. Even lions, they hunt together. I saw a video of a particular lion that was attacked by hyenas. Anybody saw that video? Oh, yes. I, I, was, I was so amazed. And this lion was just was tormented. One-on-one -on -one battle, the hyenas cannot face the lion. But there were maybe about... 15 to 20 of them surrounded. So when one scratches it, you turn around and another will scratch it. It was tormented. And then all of a sudden from afar, I saw another lion just coming. I was excited watching that video. <laughs> Immediately those hyenas saw just another lion coming. They ran away. Because they realized that now the balance has been tipped. You cannot fight this alone. Today you are strong, but there might be a time where you need strength. <laughs> if you faint in the day of battle, your strength is weak. That's what the Bible says. There's always a day of battle. When the prodigal son left his father, he left with a lot of money. 
he had friends but he didn't factor in that a time will come when that money will finish and it happened and all the so-called friends they used to go clubbing together hanging out together talking together shopping together vacationing together when there was money when you were paying their bills now there's no more money they are not picking up calls anymore I'm just so busy, girl. I'm so busy, man. I'm so busy. <laughs> I'm so busy. <laughs> Praise God. But you see their Instagram posts, and you know they are not busy. Praise God. That's why the Bible says we should not be unequally yoked. Because God is trying to help us have the right vision. A time is coming where you need, you need trustworthy people around you that can stand with you that you can share your heart with and you're not afraid that they'll go post it online the next day. Sometimes I see people posting things and, and I later realize that they were communicating with other people. Indirect communication. Wow. Can't imagine. There are some friends. You tell something and then they'll go share with everybody. God knows all of you. <laughs> and the friends will respond. <laughs> and they're just communicating indirectly. Let's move on. Blindness is the inability to see. Vision blindness is a condition where a person is unable to see God's plan for their lives. The main causes of blindness are rebellion and a hardened heart. Those are the two main causes of blindness in seeing I'm not seeing I'm not hearing God is not saying anything not, I'm not perceiving anything it's mainly rebellion because God does not communicate with rebellious people except if he wants to tell them the punishment he wants to give to them and then of course blindness can be complete or partial blindness the children of Israel were scolded by God. In Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 5. Let's start from verse 21, please. Jeremiah 5, 21. Hear this now, O foolish people, without understanding, who have eyes <laughs> and see not, and who have, who have ears and hear not. Verse 23 now says, But these people, they have a defiant and rebellious heart. They have revolted and departed. So that's why they cannot see. Defiant heart, rebellious heart. So they can see. They've made up their mind. This is what I want to do. This is where I want to go. And they still claim they are asking God for direction. The Bible says we don't take pearls and give it to pigs. The word of God is like a pearl. He doesn't give those types of things to people that they've made up their minds already what they want to do. But the good news is, today you can desire not to have a rebellious heart anymore. You can make that decision right now. I used to think I knew what I wanted for my life. It's my life. I make the decisions. Until I got to a roadblock. Pushed and pushed and pushed. Nothing happened. Then I was brought to a point of submission to God. But you don't need to hit roadblocks. You don't need to be delayed for years before you submit to God. The Bible told, told, told us about Nebuchadnezzar and how God had to humble him just because of his attitude before God. You don't need to go through those things. You can make up your mind right now. Lord, I want to be under your authority. Where you say I should go is where I will go. If you say stop, I will stop. If you say move, I would move. I don't know what is best for me. You do. Rebellion is a dangerous state to be in. This is what caused Lucifer 
to lose his exalted position in heaven. Whenever you find yourself unwilling to be under spiritual authority, you are inviting vision blindness. That's why the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth is confirmed. No truth can be confirmed by just one person. No. You know one of the reasons why deception is deception? You see, when the devil fell from heaven, he left with one thing, and that is the power to deceive. It is why many intelligence agencies, they use seduction as a powerful weapon in their arsenal. Not before the bombs come and all that, that has gotten the information already, before they now come out with heavy machinery. And the people doing the seduction might not have muscles to fight, but there's something they have to deceive where a man can look at a woman and know that this person is after me to kill me. You look at yourself in the mirror, you look at the person saying they love you, and you know, you know, you know there, there's something is off. But they still just believe that, no, 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 maybe, maybe some, but when they get what they need, they will still leave. It's the power of deception. And same thing with the man too. It's the power of deception. Anybody can be deceived. That's why we need to be under authority. Let the word of God guide your every action. <laughs> Some people have been through this before. Where you almost took a job that looked good the money looked good looked better than the one you had right now but God just intervened and you didn't take it then you realize down the line why you didn't because maybe that company folded up within a short period of time but those that just jumped from one thing to the other by, the, by their sight alone they would always be deceived that's why we allow God to lead us and direct us and guide us. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. Praise God. The devil has the power to blind people. That's what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 3 to 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. So the devil has the power to blind people's eyes and their understanding. They think they know what they are doing. But it does not make sense. But to them, it makes sense. But to those in the light, it does not make sense. How can a person go to a place and spend $10,000 just on one bottle of a drink? $10,000. And it's not like the person is a millionaire. No, 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 no. They just got a windfall and something just happened. But in their mind, they believe that they need to demonstrate that to show people that they are something when they are not. But while they were doing it, they believed that that was the right thing to do. The God of this world has blinded their eyes. When someone you know would leave you, is pressurizing you to have sex with them. And you know this person would not stay. You are not married to that person. But they just believe that, you know what? I didn't have a choice. If I didn't do it, he was going to go. But you know that he will go. And in some cases, she even knows that the guy is sleeping with her friend. 
So, so in her mind, you know, it is my fault because if I had responded to him, he wouldn't have done that. Just blindness. Is it by force to be in a relationship? No, no, no. Answer. Is it by force? <laughs> Praise God. Hmm. Acts chapter 26 from verse 14. I'm waiting for something. Acts chapter 26 from verse 14. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying, in the Hebrew language, that's another conversation. Why the Hebrew language? Because Saul could speak many languages. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. So I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both to the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people and as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send to you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light. To open their eyes. So are you saying to me that those Gentiles were all physically blind? No. They could see. But when you find a human being bowing down to this metal and worshipping it, you know that they are blind. When you find a human being worshipping a cow or a goat or a dog that you know is helpless, you know cannot... You, you need to uh, oversee that animal. The animal cannot drive a car, cannot fly a plane. The animal cannot, cannot talk, cannot communicate. I mean, for us to understand. You, you know this animal is severely limited, but you still submit your will to... Then, then you know that there is blindness. And not one person, not two, not three, not ten, not one million, not ten million people. But sometimes more than that. You know, in some places they say majority carries the vote. But it's not true. A whole nation can be under a lie. It's not about numbers. It's about the truth. To the point where even those that know the truth can sometimes be doubting themselves. Or, or, or maybe these people see something I, I don't see. And then short-sightedness. You can see, but you can't see too far away. That's why the Bible tells us to plan. For which of you intending to build a tower... Luke 14, 28 to 30. Does not sit down first, not after, first. And count the costs, whether he has enough to finish it. Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. <laughs> Praise God. Sit down and count the cost. And plan. That's why I've said this time and time again, and maybe those that have not heard it before, for a man to be ready to be married, he has to have a vision. He has to be under authority. And number three, he has to have, be able to provide for his family. Right now, not in the future right now because a man that cannot feed his home take care of his family is worse than an infidel than an unbeliever love will not fill up your stomach in the beginning it might look like it but trust me when hunger strikes love will turn to hatred so we plan we sit down to plan we plan for 2020. So whether you like it or not, 
2030 is going to come. Whether you like it or not. 2030 is going to come. And I, I know without a doubt that by then, Jesus wouldn't have come yet. Because when God gives a prophecy and says in 50 years, this is what I'm going to do, then that should tell you that Jesus wouldn't have come by then. Otherwise, maybe there was a miscommunication between Jesus and God the Father. <laughs> so when God has said something that will happen on the earth in 50 years' time, and then you tell me that Jesus will now come before, that then the, the, the word that God said is of no effect then. 2030 is going to come. Maybe 2040. You see, when I was much younger, I used to hear 2020, 2020, 2020. I said, who cares about 2020? So far away. That was in the 80s. The 90s, so far away. Now we're in 2020. The next thing you know, 2030. And maybe even 2050. Are you prepared for that? Minimum wage can take care of you now. But in 10 years' time, trust me, it will do nothing. In fact, it will bring more frustration than good. So if you skip school because of minimum wage, then you're not making a smart decision. That's being short-sighted. Because the money you're getting now, you can buy shoes. Your, your mates cannot buy. Your colleagues cannot buy. But when the time comes and responsibilities mount up, then you realize that, no, 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 I think I should have. And when I say school, I don't just, even trade school is part of it. So, so where you don't build yourself, what kind of future do you see ahead of you? It's planning. So let's not be short-sighted. Another demonstration of short-sightedness is when people live in sin. Because you, when you know that there is more to the life we're in now, you would arrange yourself effectively. Another way people demonstrate short-sightedness is not taking care of their body. I think there was a day when it was minus, um, one of the minuses, uh, uh, maybe 35, 36. I went to the church building and I was heading back to the office and I saw this young girl wearing, you know, I almost wanted to get out of the car and just say, what is wrong with you? <laughs> She's wearing a sweater, you know, and the shoe was not even, you know, there was, she wasn't dressed for the weather. She didn't look like she was cold. She was still texting, had headphones on, was just waiting, and I said, what, what, what is this? And some people, they wear, they wore shorts, mainly the younger people. You know, now I can see young people. You know, <laughs> some places I can't see young people because I am the young person. <laughs> but but you you see them hanging around like they're trying to prove a point to other people. But they are being short-sighted because they don't know the damage they are doing to their body. They don't feel it now, but in five years or ten years, they will begin to see the effect. <laughs> Many times, people that consider themselves skinny, you don't hear them saying a lot about working out because they don't think working out applies to them. Uh, but just watch. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> That's a dangerous terrain, amen. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and wrath, rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Don't be short-sighted with the way you're living your life. There is more to life than what we see on the earth. 
Some, they've said that the way you lay your bed is how you lie on it. The way you live on the earth is what will determine the way it will be for you in heaven. And then, number three, the third vision defect is farsightedness. So the ability to see now. It's amazing. I love balance in scripture. Someone was saying to me that, you know, I uh, forgot it now, but there's something that's just been coming to her mind constantly. And she, and she just quipped. She said, maybe it's because she's been reading the Old Testament. I can tell when people are spending all their time only in the Old Testament. I can tell. It shows in their action. Now, some people say, don't even go to the Old, stay in the New. No, 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 no. You need to know the shadow. So we can appreciate the light that we're in. It's balance. It's balance. Farsighted. This is so these people they only see far away. They do not see things within a shorter time frame. They are always focusing on the next generation, the next generation, but they are ignoring this generation. Not only do we need to plan for the next generation, we also need to care for this current generation. Matthew chapter 6, again, verse, verse 33. Actually, verse 34. Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow would worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day, is it is its own trouble which means after your plan for tomorrow then now leave it alone and enjoy today what an amazing balance oh i need to save up for this and save up for that praise god but enjoy today otherwise tomorrow might never come god forbid and then number four blurred vision this is when we're running with something we think is from God, but it's not from God. And like I said earlier, this is very dangerous. And this is caused by the spirit of delusion. <laughs> Revelation chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have no need and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched miserable those are very strong words poor blind and naked i counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see which means that those, that group of people, they, they thought they were okay. They thought they didn't have need of anything. But God was saying to them that, no, 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 you're, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. This is what happens when some people think money is everything. So they live to pursue more money. They live, that's, that's their goal. Just, I want more money. Money, money, money. They'll tell you, money answered all things. That's what the Bible says. Money, money, money. They are destroying their health, destroying relationships, but they don't see it. Money. Their kids are not well taken care of, but they don't see it. All they are saying is money. These kids need a bigger house, but the kids are saying, I just want you, dad. But he's saying, no, no, no. The kids, they need a bigger house. You need a bigger room. You need a bigger car. Steve Jobs died of cancer. But I know Christians that have been healed of cancer. Money is not everything. One of the prayers that you have to pray for yourself regularly is, Father, help me to know what is needful at every point in time. Help me. 
me to know so I'm not pursuing the wrong things. I don't want to be busy doing nonsense, doing things that would not last, doing things that is of no value. Help me to know what is needful. Like Mary, Jesus said to Martha, he said, you're worried about too many things, but Mary has found, she knows what is needful. As I'm speaking now, from a professional perspective, there are so many things I can be doing right now that will be paid for. But that's not the important thing. This is way more important than that right now. <laughs> Praise God. But some people don't know it. Because in their mind, they believe what they are pursuing is, is way more important. Skilled vision. What are you running with? There are times when you, you speak to someone because words, spirits are embedded in words. We, we, we talked about that last week. And we human beings are carriers of those words. You might speak to someone and the person might say, you know, why are you thinking this church is on your head, man? Church is not everything. You know, you need to. And the next thing, in their mind, they, they now refocus. And they now want to begin to run after worldly things. Only to come back again. And they've lost their place. That's why the Bible said to us, again in Matthew 6, that's 3. Jesus was saying, and he was on top of the mountain, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything will be added. Don't chase after those things. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, if you chase after money, money will develop wings and fly away. Nobody ever has enough of money if they are chasing after it. It's never enough. You can deceive yourself. Oh, once I just hit 100K, six figures, I'll be good. Then you realize that six figures is just on paper. What is coming to you is still five figures. <laughs> because the government has taken the sixth figure. <laughs> you begin to realize that the car you desire actually costs over six figures. Now you realize, oh, this is way more. That house you want it has seven or eight figures. And it's just, it's just a race to the bottom. You always keep telling yourself, in five years' time, I just need to just put things in order. In five years. <laughs> and five years will come, and then you need another five years. And one day, they wake up, and their legs are shaking. And they look in the mirror, and they see wrinkles. They see the gray hair. Now they begin to realize that I think the sun is already setting. If, if only I knew, if only, if only had I known, it's one of the reasons why I love to spend time with older people. Because, you know, when you're young, full of energy, energy is not the same as wisdom. <laughs> you know, just to even know where to invest the energy alone takes wisdom. And there's a wisdom that comes when some people with good intentions have tread along some paths and they can tell you, hey, 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 that route you're going, it does not make sense. I went that route, it did not work for me. It didn't work. In the beginning, things were good, like it's good for you now, but after a while, this and this and this began to happen. So when you're wise, if you're wise, you now look and say, okay, that's good. So, so let me re-strategize and refocus my attention. I'll give you an example. I've seen some places now, if God called them to do it, that's fine. Where God speaks and people are prophesied to individually, every single time they gather together to meet. Bible studies, Sunday service, every time. This is what God said, this is what God said, this is what God said, this is what God said. And it's good. So without knowing that was a desire I had way before ministry started. But God appeared to me one day 
and he was speaking to me about the ministry and he said don't go down in that direction and immediately he said it I knew what he was talking about you see communion with God many times is heart to heart so I had an objection and then he responded to the objection in my heart he says but you think some people are doing it and they are prospering he says now tell me have you ever seen a ministry that is growing without bounds without limitation that does those type of things and then some start coming to mind he said those that focus on the word of God that's where everybody's attention is there's something about the place where people are prophesied to individually when the word is being preached they are just waiting oh that's just sidebar they are just waiting for the time when the spirit will move and then the pastor now say please so they just sit down here and they just want to make themselves noticeable that, that for them that's the most important part of the service he said I'll keep speaking to you but you respond to people through the word of God he said it is not sustainable you cannot grow solid people by doing those things absolutely not then that's when he said you are not raising babies you are raising great men and women that will know how to hear from God for themselves now in the beginning it might not look like it because there's there's you know people like pump you know people like certain things but I thank God none of those people ordained me into ministry or called me it was God that called and he's the one that I'll follow praise God as a matter of principle, I don't mention names of ministries. But when I was much younger, there was a ministry that was, it seemed to be taking over the world. But if I mention the name now, many of you might not even know it. And the Lord said, you see, things can, like a rose, it might blossom today, so beautiful, but by tomorrow, it will just be gone. So you build things that would last. It's one of the reasons why I love the ministry of Billy Graham. You still see people 50 years later saying, yep, I got saved at the Billy Graham crusade. And I'm still going strong for God today. Because they made the word the foundation. So these are vision defects that if you're not careful, you can fall into those traps and begin to go in a direction where you think is the best direction to go. For example, some people think they can get ahead by stabbing others. You might take a few steps forward, but trust me, you are coming down. And great will be that fall. Oh yes. Took someone's husband and you expect nobody will take yours? Oh no, no, they are waiting. Oh, they are waiting. There's a special person God will prepare and package. <laughs> that when the man sees her, he will lose his mind. Oh, yes. These are elderly people say, oh, yeah. <laughs> They've seen. <laughs> They've seen. You see, some people think, oh, no, you know, the, the way I am, I mean, who? No, 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 no. If it was by mistake you made and you've repented, those days are over. God has forgiven, but, but I'm saying you are in it and you believe that you can still find your way out of it. No, no, it's impossible. So these things help us to determine what to do and what not to do. So a married man is, is coming to you, hitting you up, you, you shut it down. You absolutely shut it down because you, you know that is not something I want for my own future. Praise God. I pray that God would open our eyes to see. To see the right things. To see what we need to see. In the mighty name of Jesus. I encourage you to attend the night prayers on Friday. Not this Friday, the next Friday. It's going to be explosive. Praise God. I want to make a strange altar call this morning. Excuse me. Please, let's rise up to our feet.
Bible study about the Bible of some of this. A strange altar call because, and trust me, for those that are here for the first time, this is not usually what happens. <laughs> but we move as we're led by the Holy Spirit. Um, there's someone here that you came with the sole intention of coming to test the power of God. Now, what that simply means is that you, you allowed yourself to be convinced that you want the devil to use you to stop or to hinder or to negatively affect something that God is doing here. This altar call is for you. And I'm giving it this way because of the love of God. God has said this to me since Thursday. So some of the songs that were sang today about battle, I was just smiling. Um, <laughs> God wants to save your life. Because hear this, and I'm happy it's been recorded, you know. Um, if you don't respond to this altar call, you just have seven days. So please, you know, those here for the first time, this is not, I know, it's not the usual altar call. Uh, but I have to follow the way I am told. If you know that that is you, uh, you see, don't mind, you know, what anybody thinks. Just raise up your hands enough for me to see uh, so that I can agree with you specifically in prayer. The Bible says that Mary had seven demons in her. But she submitted herself to Christ and he cast out those demons. And she became one of those ministering to Christ. The madman of Gadara had a legion of demons. But he came and he submitted himself to Jesus. And he was not destroyed. But Elimas, on the other hand, was a sorcerer. He wanted to walk against what God was doing. And he met the judgment of God. This is not a social club. This is one of the places where the Spirit of God dwells and moves. And I know that, and many people know that. So please, if that is you, you know, spe you know specifically what you came here for this morning. Just raise up your hand and I'll pray with you. And trust me, once I'm done this and I move forward, I'm not revisiting it again. Elimas asks, uh, 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 Simon the sorcerer asked Peter to pray for him. He didn't. He didn't pray that prayer. I'm not authorized to pray any prayer after this point. I'll just give you two more minutes till 11:05, and then we we'll round up in prayer. So heaven can bear me witness that I did what I was supposed to do. We can just be praying in the spirit. Praise God. We have two more minutes.
I declare that no evil shall befall anyone that is connected, related, associated with us in spirit and in truth in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because this is a glorious week. Thank you for the release of energy. Thank you for strength. Thank you for grace. Thank you for power. We thank you, Father, for fulfillment this week. As we round up this 21 days of fasting, this time I ask that you would empower us in the name of Jesus. Cause us to hear what we must hear. Cause us to see what we must see. Help us to perceive what we must perceive. And give us understanding of those things in the name of Jesus. I commit you into the hands of the Lord Jesus. That he will bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. And give you peace and success. That anyone seeking your downfall will fall into those traps themselves in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are blessed.